Democracy, liberty and equality The term, democracy is drawn from two Greek words demos and krasha meaning people and power respectively. Thus, literally democracy means the system of government in which the power rests with the people. In the past when the population was small and the problems of the state were few, people directly participated in the management of their common affairs. This was known as direct democracy. This type of democracy is not possible in modern nation states. Therefore an indirect democracy has been evolved. Under this system people elect their representatives, who are expected to act and speak on their behalf. This type of democracy is also known as representative democracy. Various theories of democracy have been put forward which need consideration. 1. Classical or liberal theory of democracy The traces of this theory are found in the writings of Greek philosophers, even though the basic principles of the theory assumed a concrete shape in the 17th century in the writing of philosophers like Hobbes, Locke, Rousseau, Bentham, J.S. Mill, etc. The classical theory of democracy insists on active participation of the people in the political process, grant of universal suffrage, existence of representative government periodical and free elections, existence of certain fundamental rights, independence of judiciary, rule of law, et. 2. The elitist theory of democracy. In the present century a new theory of democracy was popularized by scholars like Pareto, Mosca, Mikkels and Barham. They argued that in every society there is a small group of elites, who rule a given political society. This group of elites exclusively enjoys all the power and influence. Pareto talks of two types of elites, the social elite and the governing elite. By the social elite he means a small number of individuals, who in each sphere of activity have succeeded and arrived at a higher echelon in the professional hierarchy. On the other hand the political or governing elite consists of that small group of persons who exercise the ruling power. 3. Pluralist theory of democracy. The pluralist theory of democracy is comparatively of recent origin and is associated with scholars like Robert Dahl Bareilson, Sartori, H. Eckstein, Priestess, Hunter, Aga etc. This theory holds that the power in a society is shared by the government and a large number of leaders, groups and associations. The pluralist theory of democracy is largely based on the principle that the society is plural and the state is only one of the many associations within the society. It holds that the political power is divided among various groups, classes, associations and organizations which exist within a particular society. It is opposed to concentration for power at one center because it is likely to give rise to totalitarianism and destroy the democratic values like liberty, freedom etc. A important decisions should be taken by the state in consultation with the other organized groups and due defense should be given to their views. Such decisions shall be readily obeyed by the people cause they know that their organizations have already been consulted. 4. Marxian theory of democracy. The Marxists talk in terms of democratic state rather than democratic government. They imply by a democratic state a socialist state in which there is no exploitation and conditions for free development of all exists. They hold that democratic ideals like justice, freedom, equality, etc. cannot be attained so long as economic exploitation exists in the society. Thus the Marxists offered a new meaning and interpretation of democracy. It is intimately linked with the abolition of classes. It envisages abolition of private property, ending of exploitation in society through social ownership of means of production. The ultimate objective of Marxist democracy is establishment of a community society or a stateless society. A study of the various theories of democracy shows that they have emphasized either the political or the socio-economic aspects. While the liberal theory of democracy lays emphasis on the political freedom, the Marxian theory considered the economic and social equality more significant. In other words, while the former looks to democracy as a mechanism of choosing and authorizing the government, the latter looks as it as a kind of society. A genuine democracy shall be possible only if the two are combined. Hence, democracy not only means provision of political rights to the people so that they may be able to effectively influence the policies of the government, but also removal of discriminations based on caste, creed, class, color and sex as well as equitable distribution of wealth and abolition of glaring disparities among the people on the basis of wealth.